Uh, this is WPO 110-1, distribution automation, service upgrades for a smarter grid. Sure you guys have been tired of hearing that term over the last week, smart grid, but you know, it's, it's either grid, smart grid, grid optimization, smarter grid. Basically, it's an overlay of information technology on your existing grid. So our interest in this really has more to do with the, the installation, helping you uh, do the installation of the type of, type of equipment that you would need to overlay on top of your existing grid and or uh, upgrade equipment that you've got in your grid to provide you with um, communication. So when we talk about overlaying information technology on the existing grid, there's a couple activities that we need to go through uh, to understand what your requirements are, what your needs are going to be. You know, it's a review of your circuit diagrams, your one lines, understand what equipment you've got in place and the type of equipment that you have. Establishing the topography requirements, and that is really just the layout of the equipment, locations, type of communication, wireless, wired, etc. The actual installation commissioning, because again, that's a part of our service offering, training for the equipment that uh, would be installed, performance verification, that things are operating and providing information back to you the way you'd expect it to, because again, a, a big part of what you should get from a smarter grid or from grid optimization is data back from your equipment for performance optimization and to give you information on, on reliability and efficiency. And finally, there are certain details for asset monitoring. The, and, and that's really where you're putting a sensor on um, a piece of equipment. So if it's you know, voltage, current, temperature, so the type of, type of sensing that we would do for the kind of monitoring you would need, the information that you would be looking to get back. But this is essentially the portfolio that, that my group covers. It is field service and it's any of the installation, medium, medium and low voltage installation, maintenance, etc., out in the field. We also address the nuclear market uh, where we do have um, equipment and or spe uh, specific skill sets that are designed for nuclear application. Uh, In-shop breaker refurbs, matching line, etc. Protection and control upgrades is a big part of our business and engineering studies. So we talked about going back to looking at what you have, what's in your system. And we start off with a one line, and this is just a, an example of what we would look at to begin with, to understand the equipment that you have, to understand where things are located. So as we're looking at uh, the type of equipment you would need for communication, the kind of monitoring or asset management that we would need to um, overlay on your existing system, we start here. And I'm just going to go through some, some more graphic slides really to kind of give you an indication of what a baseline configuration looks like. And you know, essentially here, what we're looking at uh, for, for baseline configuration, the relays here end up being our sensors. We're getting information through the relays, you know, whether it's transformers or breakers, you know, out, outdoor breakers or uh, metal clad gear, feeding information back to a station computer and then running it through a gateway and into your network. So ultimately, you would have the ability to see what's happening um, on any of these assets anywhere in the field that you're monitoring and understanding what their performance efficiencies are. Um, you know, this basically is sitting on top of, this, this is the distribution system, sub-transmission, transmission distribution system. I think a lot of the understanding of smart grid begins with metering at the home. And ultimately, what you want is for the end user to be educated as to what their consumption is and how to manage that consumption. You then will get that information back through your distribution system and your sub-transmission system as you're seeing in, in specific areas how this affects your uh, delivery. In terms of asset performance, you know, we talk about the apparatus, we talked about the sensoring and monitoring. We talked about the gateway, the, 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 where the information is going to go through managing your asset uh, database, using that information for analytics and decision, and then developing what you need to do for asset management and planned maintenance uh, programs uh, uh, for your assets. Apparatus, again, breakers, reclosers, relays, switchgear, typically what we're looking at in a distribution system. So from an ABB perspective, from a medium voltage perspective, this is essentially the, the type of equipment that uh, we would be addressing. And then for the sensoring and monitoring, as I mentioned before, voltage, current, frequency, time, partial discharge, et cetera. And then, you know, for substation automation and for communications, I mean, we, this is again the, the, the attempt to overlay information technology on the existing grid. 
putting in for analytics, you know, a dashboard where you're getting this information formulated in a way that it's meaningful to you. You can, you can look at your um, asset performance. And again, this is the direction of flow that we talked about. But again, you know, it is the ability to, to manage from a centralized network, to have control over assets that you have out in the field. A depiction again of the physical sensor, in this case, being applied to a 15 kV line, but it's, it's basically you know, collecting the data, communicating the data you know, back to your substation computer, um, uh, compiling data, uh, maintaining historical uh, information, and then running it through some protocol onto a network. And then this gives you access to this data real time. The, the services that we will be focused on, again, is a system monitoring requirement analysis, looking at your system to determine what kind of monitoring you're going to need, the type of sensors that you're going to need. The building of the physical sensors, developing communication, and the kind of software again. Um, we have invested in, you know, with Ventrix, as you've, as you've uh, probably seen in different presentations, and that's where their forte, where they can build up these asset management tools based on your particular requirements. Verification of the monitoring solutions, and of course, installation and commissioning. As we're talking about all of the equipment and the ability again for communication, you know, breakers, reclosers, voltage regulators, you know, cap banks, overhead switches, uh, e-houses, but in a basic uh, uh, distribution system going back to the end user, we basically have the ability to put communication on, on any of these uh, types of equipment feeding back to your substation through your network for monitoring. So this again is just a graphic example of, of what I'm talking about. Challenges. You know, one of the areas that we, we look at is, is reliability, you know, specifically availability and reliability. System reliability, what most of you have are aging assets. I think there is a, a rule of thumb in terms of uh, on the distribution side for electromechanical relays that in the install base is still 60 to 70 percent electromechanical relays. So, I mean, there is no ability for communication or, or, or you know, data gathering. So one of the challenges that we face then is how do, we, how do we overlay this information technology on the existing grid? There is an activity for upgrading the grid, going to newer technology, moving to microprocessor relays, but that's not something that's going to happen in the next, well, 20 years even. I'm sure it will, it will accelerate as time goes on, but I think there's a recognition that a lot of what we already have um, is older technology, 40 years old in most cases, electromechanical relays, um, you know, they've been out there since the 40s and 50s, and, and we've been in substations where they're, they're still there, and they're still performing, hopefully. So that's one of the key challenges that we have, is, the age, is aging assets, and how do you overlay then this requirement on top of uh, that, that um, install base? Predictive maintenance, I think that's a buzzword everybody is interested in, because you want to be able to effectively manage your assets. You want to be able to plan what the activity is on maintenance, uh, as opposed to an unplanned outage, something goes down, now you've got to respond to it. From, you know, one, one of the, the, the deliverables of this activity would be predictive maintenance. If you can get data, you can get the feedback that you, you need from, from your assets out in the field, understand how they're performing, understand what's happening, and being able to address them before they actually fail. And it leads to the next thing, then you can have planned upgrades where parts of your, your network then, however you prioritize or what's critical for you, you then plan on, on, on upgrading, moving towards a technology that easily uh, affects communication and data gathering. And it minimizes, of course, outages. Monitoring of critical assets. You know, that would be, I guess, one of the places that you'd start. You would identify within your network, or we would help you to identify what would be considered a critical asset. The things that you want to be able to, to be gathering information on. Uh, communication for monitored assets is, is really key for maintaining reliable service, reliability. Um, you know, unplanned outages, never fun for anybody. And one of the aspects of predictability is the maintenance of, of reliable assets. Being able to, 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 to monitor the performance of these assets out in the field uh, so that, you, you know, you're not waiting for a failure. You're able to get ahead of it and do the maintenance that you would need to do uh, to keep them performing. So it's one thing to have the information, then the next thing really is the control. You know, what can you do remotely to control these assets? And a part of the implementation of grid optimization is automation. So there are certain assets that you can automate, overhead switching, for instance. 
where um, you know, if you do have a failure, how can, you, how can you manage that failure without having to send resources out into the field to climb up a pole? We do the engineering review to determine the type of communication and the type of automation and the next steps to get you to having that control. That's just one of the services that we provide. Ease of installation. So we talk about this install base, right? Having this aged equipment, these electromechanical relays, older technology, air magnetic breakers. Um, so a key challenge here is retrofitting this existing gear. It's a lot of money and there's a lot of it out there. And I remember maybe eight years ago, uh, somebody saying that, you know, to upgrade our grid, to upgrade our infrastructure is a $30 trillion exercise. And I thought then that that was ridiculous. But as before, you saw all the stimulus money and trillions were like, like millions. So I, I guess maybe that's what it's really going to take. Over time, it's a huge investment. So we're not expecting that this is going to happen again in, a, in, a, in the short term. But the expectation is that once we identify critical assets and in your system, the uh, intention then is to have planned upgrades, we would look then at, at what it would take to retrofit your existing gear. So, I mean, again, a part of this is to help you or guide you in making the decisions for planned upgrades. Necessarily, you want to reduce downtime and cost for doing so, and we have several solutions. What it really comes down to is the capability to, to develop an integration plan. So it's more than just looking at your, your assets. It's more than looking at your one line and saying, okay, here's what you have. But it is taking it to identifying the critical assets, identifying the next steps for upgrading those assets, the type of communication equipment you're going to need, the type of monitoring that you're going to need, and really laying this thing out over several stages. So planned outages, again, for retrofits and upgrades. We'll walk you through what that process is and based on your requirements, structure that over time. And uh, the service you know, that's, that, that needs to be performed according to the particular needs that you have. So we go through the process of design, again, install, commission, and train. And a lot of this older equipment, I mean, it's, they, they, they pose a particular danger, right? So on the industrial side, the NFPA 70E has mandated um, a lot of the arc flash study requirements, and a lot of people have done it, probably 90% have actually done the arc flash study, but only 10% uh, have actually initiated any mitigation. You know, as far as arc incidents are concerned, there's, there's two things that you want to manage, time and distance. You want to reduce the time or you want to increase the distance, right? The further away you are from it, the safer you are, or the shorter the duration, the safer you are. So one of the things that we also look at as we're going through this is with what you've got installed, the aspect of safety and the challenges of safety. So we, 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 you know, it's the necessity to work around live equipment for the most part. We assess, again, the, the, the risk factors and we also develop the mitigation actions. I don't know if you're familiar with our REA relay or the arc flash relay. It's actually a, a short cycle relay. It operates in two and a half cycles. And the idea again then is that if you have a, an arc incident, because it monitors light and current, so it, it looks at both, and if, there is a, if it's a, an impending arc incident, it, it, it opens quickly. So it, it, it facilitates reducing time. So a lot of it comes down to education of your employees for unsafe conditions, and, and I'm, this is part of the offering that we have. So we talk about arc flash design and installation, and it's, it's arc flash design and installation as it relates to things like the REA, but there are other solutions as well. You may have situations where... Um, you, uh, th this may not be the best solution for you, but distances. And so we have remote racking on breakers and, you know, uh, on, on some of our newer low voltage breakers, you have Bluetooth control. You can be in the next room and control the breaker. So you're not, in, you're not even sitting in the same area that the breaker is. We talk about remote racking of circuit breakers and the new technology and newer products are faster clearing times, breakers that actually close more quickly. And again, operation these breakers remotely so that you're not having to be in the same, the same area. Uh, it's, it's a change of state usually where you've got the greatest opportunity for risk, right? The breakers opening or closing. That's usually when something is going to happen or nine, nine, nine out of ten times that's when it does happen. So the technology that we've got today on a lot of the equipment uh, prevents you from having to be present when this activity is taking place. So we touched on, 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 on a lot of these uh, elements already, but it is, as we're doing, as we're looking again at your, at your infrastructure, we're looking at your assets, we're talking about monitoring. Safety is a necessary part of it. We do a safety review. 
So we look at a design for safety, which includes the arc flash mitigation, or the REA relay. It includes remote racking, and it includes the, the, the recommendation for updated technology. And keep in mind, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of talking about a medium voltage uh, uh, area. That's, that's, that's my span of control and area of expertise. So this is distribution, medium voltage, and, and low voltage. So the goal again is to increase either distance or reduce time. You know, what, one of the, and I guess, you know, this is more or less like a takeaway on a support and service. One of the things that ABB brings to the party, I guess, is the fact that we're not, we're not just providing you, I guess, with an engineering service, or we're not just providing you with installation and commissioning. But the fact is that we design a lot of the equipment that we're talking about. So when we're looking at your distribution equipment uh, on your field of distribution, uh, you may not be using ABB equipment necessarily, but ABB has designed any or most of that type of equipment. So we're familiar with the technology. So where we talk about solutions, we're not talking about solutions strictly from you know, a, a service standpoint, but from a, a design standpoint. Uh, we bring to the picture global technology. A lot of this is developed on global platforms that are used in different countries around the world. So we are able to take you through the entire process, right, from the design, installation, train, support on all of the equipment, again, whether it's our equipment or not. We can adapt communication, whether it's our equipment or not. So we can design a, 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 a system for you, if you will, um, irrespective of the type of equipment that you have or the manufacturers that you have. We talked about this, this global technology. So the focus really again, is to, is to bring a design philosophy or principle that most other service companies would not be able to bring to you. So as the concept of, of grid, grid optimization is evolving, and I say evolving because, again, two years ago, smart grid was, was metering. Now we're understanding that it, it really encompasses a whole lot more than that. It's kind of migrating, again, into the distribution realm. So when, when we started talking about smart grid a couple of years ago, it was, well, it's, it's you know, AMR moving to, to AMI you know, from, from automated meter reading to automated uh, meter information, a, a two-way flow, to realize that a lot of the grid reliability, a lot of the control, the automation occurs right now anyway as we're looking at it through the distribution piece of it. So it's the next step up from where the, the homeowner is. So you educate the homeowner, it gives you information that you need to manage your assets, improve reliability and performance, it provides you with the necessary um, uh, information to affect control over these assets out in the field. And again, this is the process that we walk you through. So the advantage of having a service group with the product knowledge and experience is that we've, we've been involved in this before and we can help you necessarily to, to have a, a successful outcome.